Um, so we're gonna move on to the final topic, and Breath of the Wild is not the only game the Switch has. Holy cow! Wait, really? <laughs> 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 so blasphemy! Before we talk about some other games, um, let's just go over w quickly uh, what each of us got on launch day. Okay, obviously we got the Switches. I mean. No, the that's that's the given. But like, what additional stuff did we get? In fact, what version of the Switch did we get? Did we get the Neons, etc. Obviously, you guys all know that Eric and I got the Grays. Um, but let's start with. Well, how about Eric? Let's start with you. What well, what did you get day one? Um, I got the Switch, obviously. Uh, special edition Breath of the Wild, and the collector's edition uh, guidebook. Okay. Oh, and a screen protector. Oh, yeah, and a screen protector. The crap. Oh, you're just saying. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I um, don't really count that. Is that all you got? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's all you got. Oh, and the DLC. Sorry. Yep. Oh, DLC. Wild DLC. Okay. Yeah. Mason, what'd you get day one? All right, so just to make it clear, um, I have a lot of money. I just don't know what to spend on, so I kind of chose that night. Um, so that's what work does for you when you still live at home. But my point is, okay, um, I got a gray switch, a neon set of Joy-Cons, Breath of the Wild Special Edition, a Pro Controller, the Collector's Guide for Breath of the Wild, 1-2 Switch, the Zelda Amiibo, and I think that's it. Nice. I think. Yeah, that's it. So, th that's going to be pretty similar to what I got. Because I, I got the gray uh, Switch, because that's all they had available. Um, I did technically already have purchased these blue set of Joy-Cons here, but they hadn't arrived yet. Um, so, I'm going to count it as a day one purchase, because I purchased it before day one. They arrived on the following Monday. Uh, so, I had the extra set of Joy-Cons. Um, I got the Pro Controller, obviously. Um, I have the Breath of the Wild Special Edition, all the Breath of the Wild Amiibo, which you can see a bunch of them out here, including the Wolf Link one, since that's usable in Breath of the Wild. Um, I got, what else did I get? I got the free poster that came with GameStop for, for Breath of the Wild. Oh, yeah. um, I got oh, one yeah. to Switch. Um, I got the Collector's Edition Guidebook from GameStop. Not the giant, massive one that's on Amazon that doesn't even come out till the end of the month. Um, I would like to get my hands on that one, but we'll, we'll see if that happens. Um, I don't have as much money as Mason just laying around living with my parents, so. Um, but that's okay. There was a time in my life when I did. I'm just way past that time. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of anything else. I got the screen protector. Um, still waiting on a charge grip that I should have got day one. Uh, I purchased it, but now they don't have any more left, so I'm waiting for them to get more in stock. Um, but whatever. That is what it is. That's, that's as much my fault as it is GameStop's fault. Um, and uh, that might be it. I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Oh, I got Snipper Clips. Uh, ended up getting yeah, that I got one. that too. I was going to mention that. I forgot. I um, got, got that digital. Effects. I wish I would have just bought it at GameStop because then I could have got my points on my card. Oh, yeah. Because uh, there was no bonus for buying it through the eShop. I could have just bought a digital copy from them and entered a code. Anyway. Do they actually whatever. Do they have yeah, physical copies of it? No, no, no. But you can buy digital codes through them. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, any digital huh. game, like, what I used to do on Wii U is, like, especially back when the Wii U had that 10%, uh, like, point bonus or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, what you would do is you could buy it through GameStop, right? And you would get your points for spending your money at GameStop. And then when you enter the code in on the Switch, you'd also get points on your Nintendo for it. Nice. With the bonus. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, so, like, you could actually double up your points that way um, at two huh. on two different systems. So, it was, it was kind of cool. Um so yeah, it's something I should have done with Snipper Clips, but I didn't. Um, and then, uh, this wasn't day one, but like two days later I got Just Dance 2017. Um, because that's my primary workout method right now. I realize I'm not getting out of the house much since I bought the Switch. <laughs> um, so every now and then I'll be playing, okay, it's been about an hour and a half breath of a while. Let me switch over to Just Dance quick and do like, you know, a quick quick few songs quick and get my, get my heart rate up. Um, especially now that... I'm the window in my office works, so I can actually cool down a bit better. Um, it's been kind of it's been kind of nice, um, but yeah, there, there really isn't anything else I got. Um, thought about getting the headset, decided against it since we don't really know how things are going to work with, with with talking right now. Beyond supposedly it's through a phone app, I'm, I'm hope I can do it native with my system as well. But again, Nintendo's not talking about it. <laughs> um, so. 
let's just talk briefly about some other some other games on the Switch. Uh, Eric doesn't have much experience with anything right now besides Breath of the Wild and a touch of Snipper Clips, <laughs> like a few minutes of it, uh, while we were playing another game on a different system. <laughs> um, we're not nerds, I swear. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I'm not sitting here with my multi-screen set up watching a basketball game while I'm while Yeah, I'm that's kind of why, what I've been zoning out on. So sorry, people. <laughs> well, we lost. Ignoring we lost. you. I'm just, yeah. Yeah, my, my Milwaukee Bucks, the shirt I'm wearing, I'm, I'm pretty sure they lost. They did. Um, which ends their six-game winning streak. What a pain. Um, but because it's been brought up a lot uh, by Mr. Mason already, let's talk a little bit about that one-two switch. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I see you're really excited. I mean, I am no. Usually, when I just say yes, I'm just confident in what I'm going to say. Like I already have everything planned out in my head what I'm going to talk about and stuff. So, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. So, I'll I'll briefly go over my experience with One Two Switch before I hand it over to you. Uh, and one thing I haven't done One Two Switch yet because I I've only played One Two Switch against kids. <laughs> it's not fair. You were. Um, and when I say it's not fair, it means basically. 25 of the 28 games, I'm going to beat them in every time. I, I was going to say you're going to get your butt kicked. but no, no, 25 of the 28 games, I'm going to beat them in every time because I understand it, how it works better than yeah. they do. Uh, which And these are kids like between ages 6 all the way up to 11. And like the fact that there were some 10-year-olds and 11-year-olds that just didn't get it is like, I don't know if one switch really resonates with children. I don't think it's going to. Um, so I don't know how much of a family game it is because it, some of the concepts are hard. Like... Um, there's that one mini game in it. Well, they're all mini games, but but this one game in it where you have to twist the Joy-Con like you're doing a locker, like Is twisting like a lock, and you have to hit the three right? spots on the locker. Kids yeah. didn't understand it because they don't use those kind yeah, of locks suppose. anymore. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, what do you mean? I'm like, oh, well, you're in elementary school. You don't even have real lockers. Um, so it's just uh, it's so weird. Like the doing, and a lot of games feel that way. Um, where even when they do understand it, they're not that good at it, um, and I don't see them getting better with practice until they're older. Uh, now there's certain games that uh, I'm pretty much always going to lose the kids. As I said, 25 of the games I'm always going to beat them in, but there are three games that I'm probably never going to beat them in. Uh, one is the running to get the flag. Um, they just have a lot more energy than I do. <laughs> a lot more energy. I do not have the energy level or the stamina to keep up with how fast those kids can move their arms and legs. And they're a heck of a lot more in shape than you are. <laughs> uh, the other one is runway, where you have to walk walk the catwalk on the runway and stuff. Um, I did end up winning one match, but I almost had to throw up my hip to, to do it. So, <laughs> don't know how many more of those ones I'm going to win. I've lost a lot of those ones. Um, and then, what was the other one? I'm trying to remember. There's one other game that I just could, just baffled me. I kept losing. Um, quick Draw. Quick Draw. That's fun. They just have faster reflexes than me. Period. And they understand that game, no problem. Ready, steady, fire. No, I'm done. Yeah. Before they even finish the word, I haven't even fired yet, and they already hit me. Yeah. Uh, well, my only hope is that they hit, hit the ground instead of me, because they were too quick on the trigger. Yeah. But uh, that they also don't have as far up to go as you do either. It's, they got the little shorter arms. I don't care. <laughs> reaction time. Yeah. They're just a lot faster. Um, but again, I mean, like reaction time-wise, kids should be faster. Um, our reaction times and reflexes actually only get worse as we age. They don't get better. <laughs> Um, so that's why you see most professional gamers are between the ages of like 15 and 28. Because once you get past that, your reflexes aren't as fast. Um, especially in like Twitch like games, like uh, when you have to play like League of Legends or something. Um, still, it is just a very interesting experience I've had. Um, as I said, I've only played it with children, so it hasn't been exactly fun. Because I'm either just dominating them or I'm playing the three games I can't win. Um, so, like, as cool as it is to be like, yeah, dominating these kids, baby. Um, the, the, it's not fun to just beat kids repeatedly over and over. When you know pretty much everything you ever do with kids, you can beat them over and over. Like, I know 
when I like when I play Monopoly against like my six year old daughter, I know I can destroy her in Monopoly if I want to, but like I feel bad doing it. <laughs> Unless the kid is so arrogant at everything they do, kind of like you. <laughs> where, where yeah, even then I feel bad. I feel bad because like like we have this kid there that like loves basketball and is really cocky about it and thinks they can just like run circles around me. I'm like, alright, let's play a game of one-on-one. I just wreck them. Just stuff every shot they do. Or like, they'll try to body, they'll even like purposely try dragging me and I'll still make the shot and I'm just like, well, yeah. we didn't think you were good. I'm like, no one thinks I'm good because I'm a freaking bowling ball. <laughs> but like, I know what I'm doing and it's just like, I, it, I'm just bigger, stronger and I've been playing this game a lot longer than you. Yeah. Uh, and I can pretty much say that with every sport. Now, the things you can do better than me, yeah, you're going to be able to run probably faster than me, or if not faster, longer distances than I can. And that's great. I don't care about that. Yeah. Even when we play soccer, I'm probably still better than you. And it's not because I'm trying to, like, be cocky about it. It's just because you're a kid. Yeah. Like, I literally just have to, like, stick my stomach out, and you're going to fly off of it. And that's not a penalty on me. Yeah. You're running into me. So, yeah. <laughs> like, it's not fair. Um... And so I haven't played it in a situation that's fair, which is one reason why I do want to get a recording. I want to do a video of us playing the game, me, Eric and I, um, where we make a, make a little game out of it, whether it's we have to eat you know, these certain foods if, if for every minigame we lose, or you know, I'd say make it into a drinking game. I don't know how drunk we want to get. Um, I'd have fun doing that. Maybe that's something I'll do with Yulia sometime because she likes drinking. Um, do that maybe with my girlfriend uh, if we get some babysitter sometime before we go out be like hey um, before we go out let's record us playing this game and we have to do a shot for every time we lose um, oh, and then God. there's yeah, I just want to make a game out of it uh, heck we can maybe throw in some of our Madden trades in there yeah, oh, you can extra trade this season if you, yeah. if you win overall yeah. um, but again I haven't experienced it in that situation yet it's just been playing against children so to me it's been very unfulfilling um the only thing I think that's nice about it is it does prove HD Rumble. Yes. Um, that was a big thing Nintendo advertised. It, it, it's a legit thing. It, it exists. HD Rumble is real. It, they're, they're not pull, yanking your leg with it. Can we um, talk about how insane that ball count game is? That ball count game, man. It's, it blew my mind. I played that and I was like, what is going on? Yeah, it feels like they're balls in the box. It, it feels yeah. like it feels like you think it should feel. It's crazy. Yeah, it is insane. I that game that just overall. Um, and the one thing I say is, is fun about this game, and I think this is what's going to make it fun for Eric and I, is that almost every single game you never look at the screen. It says look into each other's eyes. Oh god! Like there's a game where you spin plates, and you are encouraged to try to knock the other guy's plate down. Like it's gonna turn into all out wrestling matches as we try to keep our as we try to keep our things pointed up and twisting as I'm trying to knock his off. Yeah, like yeah. the thing the game encourages this stuff. There's a soda shaking game. It's encouraging you to shake the heck out of it before you hand it off. So it blows up in his face instead of yours. Um it, it's like there's games I could see as being a lot of fun. I, I just haven't experienced in a situation where it is fun. Which sucks. Um but man, that HG Rumble, that ball count game, the, even the soda game when the, when it explodes, um, just I don't know if HG Rumble is going to be a thing that changes gaming in any significant way. I don't know if anyone's really going to take advantage of it. Even the company's like, oh, we're going to have HG Rumble, that's great. Um, it doesn't work exactly. I think like Nintendo advertised it a little strange where. They said, like, oh, you could feel water pouring into a glass. That's not what I feel. I don't think if they made a game about pouring water into glasses, I would actually feel the water coming into the glass. Right. Um, but in many situations, it, it feels like it should. That ball count game is a perfect example of, this is just amazing. I have no idea how you can use this in any practical sense in a, in a real video game. See, the thing is, I saw that, and I'm like, that's insane. So I tried it, and I, my jaw dropped to the ground, and I'm like, okay, I gotta look this up. So I saw a picture of a, dis a disassembled Joy-Con. There's nothing in it that could replicate that actual feeling. I'm like, there's no little marbles they have stationed in some little area for this one specific game. No, this is a battery. This is wires and cords. There's nothing. Yeah, there's like three to... little rumble things. In it. It's insane. Yeah. It blows my mind. Like, if I should have recorded my initial reaction, like, I literally, 
my jaw was dropped as low as it could possibly go. I was just shocked. I I was speechless. I'm guessing you really, really love one two switch. Uh, see, it's like I I don't think it's worth the fifty dollars. Like a lot of people don't, but I would pay like maybe thirty five at the most. It's just like I'm a sucker for party games, so Mario Party is kind of my thing, and Wii Party stuff like that. Um, so one two switch is kind of something I, I was more excited for than a lot of other people. Um, and like a few certain mini games really um, make that a special game for me. Just like the ball count and quick draw is fun. Is it uh, like, your favorite launch game besides Zelda? Um, I wouldn't say favorite. It's my third favorite. I will say that. Um, Snipper Clips is my second. Oh my gosh, Snipper Clips. Yes, Snipper Clips. So Snipper Clips is a game I got to play with kids, but I played a ton with like an actual adult. Um, I didn't play three player yet. I've only done four or two player. Dude, Snipper Clips is amazing. It is. I, I would pay. I would almost pay the fifty bucks for Snipper Clips. <laughs> so like if they swapped out the twenty dollar price tag with the fifty one, pay fifty for Snipper Clips, twenty for one two switch. I would do that. Like, yeah, like Snipper Clips is so good. Um, it's such a simple concept. Why hasn't a game like this existed before? I mean, like, I guess like the current whole... gen consoles. Can, there's nothing Snipper Clips is doing that's like, oh, it's unique to the Switch. No. Right. It's just Unless such a brilliant Joy Cons. Such a brilliant concept. Right. Um, I just I, I'm in shock in all the unique ways, like in all the different ways you could solve everything. Like you don't have to ever solve anything the same way twice. It's just oh, it, it's so crazy to me how they made that all work. Um, it is. It you know, it, if you had to summarize what Snipper Clips is in three sentences, what would you say? Oh goodness! Ah, uh, let's see. Put you on the spot. Okay, here's time for some improv. Um, two characters are who you play as. You snip and clip your way to victory. Form shapes out of one another to get to the goal. There we okay. go. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Snipper Clips is a puzzle game. Yeah. An interactive puzzle game. Um, it's so good. Such a good one. It, it's amazing. Like if you. Um, I will say single player isn't that much fun. Um, no, I don't. I don't like single player. Yeah, I, I, I play too. single player. It is a game meant to be played with at least two people. Uh, it's single player is doable. Uh, everything is doable with single player, but it, it's, it's almost dramatic. like um, it's almost like some people said they felt with Triforce Heroes. Uh, I didn't feel this way because I highly enjoyed Triforce Heroes single player. But some people said that like Triforce Heroes. Wasn't that fun single player, but multiplayer is where it's at. That's what the game is built for. Which, that is literally what Triforce Heroes was built for, was multiplayer. Snipper Clips, again, literally built for multiplayer, but they let you play single player. Um, I almost feel like Snipper Clips, though, single player shouldn't even be an option. It should literally so just be a two to four player game. And even if you did want to play it by yourself, just take the Joy Cons off. <laughs> yeah, know? right? Because you, you, you can, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, so many of those puzzles, you know, you can pick up one Joy-Con do one thing, then pick up the other Joy-Con do another. Um, but, man, this game. And, like, it's kind of cool, like, some challenges you can make for yourself. Like, I heard, um, I don't know if it was on Kind of Funny, but th there was some uh, group out there, some podcast I was watching that said, yeah, so you know, like, that one basketball one that where it drops down, you try to get in the hoop on the very first basketball challenge. But, like, yeah. yeah, so, like, we decided to make it harder, where we were going to say when we hit that button, we want it to bounce one time and get into the hoop. And it's like, Ooh. how the heck are we going to make it work one time and get into the hoop? Um, like, that's just, that doesn't even occur to me, like, adding additional challenges to it to, to make right. it even more interesting. Um, I feel like it's... No, go ahead. Sorry, I cut you No, off. no, go for it. I was going to say, I think it's going to end up going... I, I, well, it's going to be one of those low-key games that just dominates. Like, it's going to do so much better. It's going to get sequels and all that good stuff. But most importantly, I feel like it's going to be a game people look back on in a way they do to Mario Party. How it's like you get mad at your friends for... Because you can just walk by and like cut your friend in half and oh, keep sure going with your day. Okay. It's, like, it's a fun game. competitive edge to it that makes it fun. I get frustrated. Like, oh, I get frustrated. Oh, Yulia, I really wanted you to do this one thing. Snip, 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 snip. Cut right, you all. Yeah. Are you going to listen yet? Snip, snip. Are you going to listen yet? <laughs> it's like a competitive edge on the teamwork you're supposed to be having. And it's the best. I love it. Like, yeah. I, I like it. Yeah, Snipper Clips is by far my, my you know, not counting Zelda, my, my other favorite launch game. 
Um, you know, as I said, I haven't played one two switch in a situation yet to appreciate it. Um, I will say this: I don't think because one two switch is obviously the the other most advertised game I think for launch. Yeah, I can agree with that. And, and I think I think one two switch's problem one its price. Uh, yes, I don't think definitely. I don't think anybody who's played it, even people who absolutely love it, think fifty bucks is worth it for twenty eight mini games. I'm guessing uh, you're one of the ones that think it should be a pack in. It definitely should be a pack in. Yes. I don't know why okay. it's not a pack in. Yeah. I thought that, that was one. a bad idea on their part. I was like, that. I know Nintendo's was like, well, you got to look at the value proposition, and like, if we went in a pack in, we'd have to make it three hundred fifty dollars. No, you don't. You just eat the cost of one two switch. I mean, you got to think about it from a perspective that there's 28 mini games and it's fifty dollars. Like, it's like saying you're gonna pay all, about two dollars for each mini game, almost roughly. Yeah, yeah and I get that, our, but like, our, once you switch is a prove it game. Right. right yeah. yeah. Like, just and, like Nintendo Land was, just like Wii Sports was. Nintendo Switch is a prove it game for the technology of the system. So like the why, unlike game, other yeah. prove it games, is it not packed in? Everyone should just have it for free. Like I, I, that's why I hate Nintendo's excuse that oh well, we'd have to increase the price of the console to 350. No, you don't. You just this is the game that proves everything the system can do. You just throw it in and cut your losses. I yeah. I just don't understand why it's not a packing game. And, and I, maybe I'm more angry about it than I should be, but I feel like once you switch does a lot of cool things to HD Rumble that no one else is ever going to do because most people aren't going to experience it. Well, yeah, nobody's because they don't want to buy it because it's too much. Yeah, they don't want to spend 50 bucks on it. And even when it's right. discounted down to 20 someday as a Switch Classic, even though it's probably not going to have close to the sales to become a Classic, Nintendo's going to make it one anyways because they want to push, oh, yeah. push sales of it, I still don't think people are going to buy it. There, there, there's right. nothing super appealing about the game on its own. But once you play it, you start realizing, ah, just like that ball count game. Oh, yeah. this is amazing. Well, people aren't going to care to get to that point where they see it's amazing. Because it's not a game that, um, you know, like they said, you know, like I heard one people say, uh, well, dude, this would be such a fun game to get a bunch of people to do and have a party game. I'm like, yeah, if everyone is silent. Because so much of the game, you need to be quiet and use your ears and listen. Like, say, the uh, even the quick draw. You need to listen for when it says fire. If all your buddies are chit-chatting and having a good time in the background, you're going to have a hard time hearing that. Well, it's there's quick draw, and then there's fake draw. Fake draw is the one that has the other words before the yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it's not even I, just yeah. that. Like uh, Most of the games have a point where it says start. Um, there's like the gorilla game where you have to copy an audible pattern. Uh, there is the badminton game, which you literally need to listen for the ball. Yeah. Like So it's not a good party game because... You can't actually have a party going on while you're playing the game. You, you, everyone has to shut up. It's a non-party party. It's like a movie where everyone just has to be quiet except for the two people playing. It's yeah. it, it's just one of those. It's weird. It's really really weird. Um, and that's the thing, like, because every advertisement for it makes it feel like it's a party game, but nothing about how the games work is party. Well, yeah, every every advertisement I've seen is. A bunch of people like playing it outside. Yeah, playing it outside as everyone's having this, a, an yeah. outdoor cooking and yeah. all stuff. It's like, how are they playing this and hearing what's happening? One thing to mention, I think, is that uh, with my experience with the console, I mean, in portable mode, it is pretty loud, I think. But in terms of it having is, yeah. a bunch of people around you, not so much. I don't think it would be. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like in portable mode, especially when you saw like the advertisement with their outside, even when it's on your TV. Like, what am I going to have to have the thing cranked up to a hundred? In order to hear it, right. which is bad for your ears, like I, Man, it's, it, it's just not. It's just not a, a, a. The way they're advertising it in real world situations doesn't work that way. Um, I think it's cool to think about it working that way, but it, it, there's too many audio cues. I think they're um, intending it to be that way, but yeah, like when it's a game where you're supposed to focus on the other player and then use your ears as it, as your other sense, that's not good. Um, the way this game is set up, it just it isn't good that way. I mean, some games are going to work fine. Obviously, like the Samurai game, Catching the Sword, that's all fine. Whatever. You're not listening for audio cues on that, right? You're watching the other person. But so many of the games, you're listening to audio cues. So, uh, to me, it feels like this is just a proof of concept game. I can't imagine 1-2-Switch cost enough money for them to make for it to be a $50 game. 
I mean, Breath of the Wild is probably a two hundred million dollar investment by Nintendo, and mm-hmm. that's sixty bucks. So you're telling me One Two Switch was a fifty million dollar game, so they charge fifty bucks for it? Yeah. Like, didn't they have to sell like two million or something to break even? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's that's dumb. It feels like this is just a game that they would have been making up. It feels like they would have made this game, regardless of anything, just like with the, uh, just like with Nintendo Land, because they're just testing out the technology, and these are the games they came up with while they were testing it. I also think it's interesting how you mentioned that uh, you your kids don't understand it all that well, depending on their age and stuff. But they really haven't had any kids in the trailers or anything for it. It's been always adults, which I think it's kind of it's kind of interesting to see. You know. Well, the thing is, I think primarily adults are what are buying the Switch, to be honest. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, like, I think about what games that launch really appeal to kids. Maybe Just Dance, but that's on everything. It's on your phones. So, like, yeah, even <laughs> Eric's like, well, what? I'm like, did you know, actually, uh, on the Switch and I think on the other consoles, you can use your phone as a controller. Huh. Yeah. So, like, if I... Like, I have four Joy-Cons. If I want to add two more dancers to it, just, well, you got smartphones, you got to get your extra dancers. You just got to download the app. Huh. Um, but, yeah, the, it's not a system to me that appeals to kids in the moment. I think, like, when I've had it at work, I've seen elementary kids think it's cool. But outside of Just Dance, they really don't get it. And, of course, they get Just Dance because it's been around forever. You know, they were playing it on their Wii's and stuff when they were little or last year when I had the Wii U you know, like they, they they understand how that works but um, a lot of the one two switch stuff is just whatever um, even like the one kid Jake he was really excited to play the baseball game on one two switch uh, it's fun it's difficult and there was not a single kid there that could hit my fastball even though I really wasn't throwing it that fast it doesn't matter they can't use the audio cues and the timing to hit it. Um, whereas I had no problem doing it. I was smacking home runs. Um, so it's like, yeah, it's just not something I think that appeals to kids. It doesn't really work in the situations Nintendo suggests it should. And they're charging too much money for what is a ben- what I mean, it's a mini game collection. Yeah. It's a mini game collection that proves the tech of the Switch. So like, I think one two Switch is gonna be a blast when Eric and I do it. I don't think it's going to make for a highly entertaining video. Lots of trash talk. Lots of lots of fun. It, it's like right up my alley um, for how Eric and I have played games our whole yeah. life. This is right up our competitive it, spirit it, it, alley. It might be a little NS for w, Oh, it's okay. But... I don't care if, it, if it's not safe for work. Um, that's just going to be all about having fun and me kicking your ass. Or you kicking yeah, my yeah, ass. Yeah. Um, but it's just... I think Nintendo really dropped the ball with this game because I think if they made this a pack-in, I think you would see a lot more other developers maybe even Nintendo themselves, trying to use some of these unique features in the games that they have. Like, I think because Wii Sports was included, with the Wii, you saw a lot of people trying to use motion controls in games. Um, you know, you saw some uses of the touchscreen on Nintendo Land, so you saw some other people try to use the touchscreen in their games. Um, but because the primary game for the system is Breath of the Wild, which basically takes advantage of zero of the Switch features. It's just traditional controls. Well, yeah. That's how people are going to primarily make games with the system, is traditional controls. So, like, H- HD Rumble, who cares? You know, the fact that you can use motion controls, who cares? Yeah, I mean, technically it is Wii U port, so... But of course it's not going to take advantage of any of the but it, stuff. But it could. It, it theoretically could, yeah. Like I talked about before, although I don't think it can work... Uh, you know, the feel of when you dive in water, having the HD Rumble ca- yeah. make it feel like water is going through your fingers. Yeah. Um, again, I don't think HD Rumble can actually do that based on my experience with it, but they could do something. Like, they could make it when I get hit by a rock. Like, oh, I get hit by the rock on the right side. They could have a hard thump mm-hmm. on that right side joint yeah. if they wanted to, but yeah. they don't. Yeah. Um, so, like, there's ways they could have did it, but I think because Nintendo didn't include it as a pack and most people aren't going to play it, and I think HD Rumble is going to end up falling by the wayside, which sucks. Yeah, hopefully not. It sucks knowing that it's probably because like, what sucks about it too is that that HD Rumble is probably a primary reason these things are, these Joy Cons are fifty bucks a piece, eighty dollars for a set. Yeah, like it feels like that's the major tech in these things. Forget the IR sensor and all this stuff. We've had IR sensors like that around for ages. This HD Rumble is what's new. I don't know. 
Maybe by holiday, all Switches are going to be bundled with, with this by then, potentially. Like, if one two Switch doesn't sell well, I can see them being like, let's just make it a back end. Yeah, it still doesn't help the people that bought it without it. Yeah, the people that bought it without it were buying a Switch anyways. Yeah, that's true. Nintendo cares about them. Yes, Nintendo does not care about us. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> we're the people that, we're the Nintendo system. Uh, except for you, Breath of the Wild was like, okay, I don't own a Wii U, I need this. Yeah. I need this in my life right now. Yeah. Um. Apparently, you need this in the, at your rate of play. You need it in your life for the next five years. <laughs> yeah, that's before the DLC even hits. So make it seven. Make it by age forty. You'll finally have beaten the game. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> a decade later. Oh, only eleven years. We're good. Um, so we're gonna kind of wrap up the podcast there. I think it's a good a good spot to cut off on, just because we've kind of run the gambit. Like, there's other games out there we could talk about. Obviously, fast racing, uh, Neo. Uh, I am Sensu. I can always say it wrong. An RPG game. Um, Setsuna? Yeah, Setsuna, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I heard that game's fantastic. Um, I'm trying to even think what other games are on the Switch right now. There, I think there was nine games I saw Something in the like eShop. That. Huh. Um, I own four of them, so, like, I own, like, 50% of the Switch library right now. Hell yeah. There's Bomberman. Bomberman, yeah. Um, and the thing is, I heard Bomberman's actually really, really good. Nobody thinks it's worth 50 bucks. But... Um, apparently it's just because it's short. Ah. But Bomberman's always been short. So, like, it's not really a knock on the game, it's just a knock on the pricing model. Uh, but still, um, it, it's just, I'm excited. Um, maybe we'll end on this. Uh, what is the one thing that you're, the one game you're looking forward to most coming out that isn't out yet on Switch? Start with Mason on that one. All right. Um, for me, it would definitely, hands down, have to be Odyssey. Um, I mean, coming up soon, definitely Arms, but Odyssey overall because uh, I'm always I grew up with Mario. My first game was Mario 64, and then I got Sunshine, and then Galaxies, and 3D World and 3D Land weren't my cup of tea. They just kind of felt like fake 3D Mario games, if that makes any sense. Um, so it's going to be really great to go back into a game that Nintendo considers to be like the old roots, like Mario 64 and Sunshine. Uh, just kind of hopefully relive that the experience and the feeling of satisfaction I always had playing those other games. So you know, game that that, that game totally. Uh, I'm Eric excited is to like see... literally worshiping the words you're saying right it, now. It, it, well, good. There we he go. Took, he took the words right out of my mouth. I don't even have to say anything. Fine. Really? Yeah. Then I'm gonna be. I, I'm gonna make you regret those words, and the, the only reason you're gonna regret them is because you don't know enough about this game yet. Ukulele is what I'm looking for. Okay, uh, okay, well, that because one the too, thing is, but more, we, I, more I, I, I don't know, like, I know the people making the game are, like, a lot of people that made, like, Banjo and Kazooie and Conker, but there's also people that did work on it, and everything I have seen reminds me of those games, but I don't know yet if it lives up to those games, or if it's kind of a shell of what those games were. Um, but the fact that it potentially could be, as good or on par with those games, um, just got, has me excited because those were like huge games in my childhood. That basically there's been nothing like them since. Yes, there's been other 3D platformers, but not that not 3D platformers that combine the platforming uh, with the unique and funny characters and just the pure humor that those games oh, yeah. injected into 3D platforming. Um, so I'm really hoping that 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 this game fills that that niche. Um, and again, it's an indie game, so, you know, it, it's a well-known indie game, but, because uh, it's made by former AAA developers. But, yeah, there's that. There's actually a bunch of indie games I'm looking forward to. The, the Nintendo, when that, they did that Nindy Direct, man, I kept looking, like, every game you're throwing up, I want. Yeah. Um, and I usually don't say that, because I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big player of those independent games. Um, you know, obviously on my phone I play some, but outside of that, I really don't purchase a lot of them on consoles or on PC through Steam. Um, but, man, I think I'm going to end up, this, this is going to be the console I own a whole bunch of, uh, of small games on. Um, and I don't even, I don't even know why I consider you guys really small. It's probably bigger than Super Bomberman R. Um, but, I'm excited. I'm actually interested in... Comparing uh, my enjoyment of ukulele to whatever my enjoyment is of Mario Odyssey, because they're both 
basically 3D platformers that go back to the old school ways. Um, yep. And Mario 64 is a very different kind of game than Banjo-Kazooie was, even though they were both 3D platformers. So I'm really interested to see how Mario Odyssey and Yuka Lele are going to hold up now. Yep. Um, next right. to each other. But I understand, True. like, you guys pump for Mario Odyssey, you should be pumped for Mario Odyssey. How can you not be? Um, you be and if I'm going to give, if I'm going to give, like, a shout out to maybe one of Nintendo's major games coming out that I'm looking forward to more than Mario Odyssey, is Splatoon 2. Yeah. Yes, that one also. Like, I just feel like, like, I, like, yeah. I, Mario Odyssey deserves all the hype. It really does. Um, but... Between Ukulele and Splatoon 2, I don't even know if I'm going to pick up Mario Odyssey at launch, unless Nintendo sends us a review copy. Um, I think I'm just going to... It feels weird saying this now, because there's not a lot of games, but I feel like I'm going to have too much to play. Because, again, remember, we also had the major story DLC for Breath of the Wild dropping around that time, too. Yeah. Uh, but I'm definitely going to own Mario Odyssey. How can you not? And who knows? Like, I'm saying this now, E3 isn't here yet, right? That's when we're going to hear all the big news about Mario Odyssey um, and whatever other games aren't even announced yet. That's going to be the fun thing is E3. I'm so excited for it. Well, that's what's so nice about this E3. Last E3 was all about Zelda, right? And, like, that was that was cool. Like, they took a huge risk and it paid off. Because yeah. Zelda, apparently, they, they critics agree, I, is, like, one of the greatest games they've ever made. So, like, they deservedly got the spotlight. Um, and now this E3 is all about what's next. Okay, we got our Zelda. Mm-hmm. What's next? Sell us on games. It should be. It should just be flooded with Switch games. Um, so I'm pumped. Really pumped to see what they're going to do there. Uh, so that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I don't even know what episode we're on at this point, because I don't remember what our last episode was, because we were now, oh, you know, we took a, a week off for launch. Are we in the, like, 17 I think it was 19. 19? I think it was 18 last yeah. time, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> um, I also want to thank, obviously, Mason of Delfino for hopping on the podcast. It's always nice to have you. Well, thank you very much. It's always nice to be here. Yeah, it's always, it's always nice to talk about more than Zelda, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> I had a lot to say today. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Uh, maybe we'll have you on some future podcasts because I'm still experimenting. As I said, this is the first week right. we're having a third person on uh, since, like, the very first podcast. So oh, hopefully wow. everything goes well mm-hmm. and I can edit this all together. Um, if it doesn't, well, then poop. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but if it goes well then obviously I'll be looking forward to hopefully get you on some future ones as well uh, maybe even a fourth person if I want to get that crazy Whoa. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how crazy I want to get with editing uh, and then obviously Mr. Eric it's been a pleasure let's go let's go play some Switch some Madden some yeah. food food and uh, I like that idea. let's enjoy the rest of our night because man we haven't hung out in over a week that's, yeah, I know, that's right? unusual for it us is. it is um, since Switch launch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it has been yeah. since Switch launch. No, you came with oh, one yeah. time to, to yep. pick up my kid. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, like, that was kind of a wash of a night, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's been, that was over a week ago. So, <laughs> we usually hang out a couple times a week, folks, so, like, yeah. we, get, we actually want, want it, you know, we're friends, so let's do that friend thing. Yeah, right? All right. All right. We'll catch you guys next week. <laughs>